All right, hello everyone. Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com. And before we get started today, uh, I'd love it if everyone would go and check out my new landscape photography post-processing and HDR blending tutorial. Uh, I've been working on it for about three or four months. It's been out for a few weeks now. So if you are interested in that, I take you through my entire editing workflow. So how I add color, sharpening, how I blend my HDRs together with luminosity masks and not using HDR software. Uh, lots of great tips and tricks in there if you're interested. Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about uh, babying your gear and people that, uh, that literally like walk around with their gear kind of nestling it like a little baby. Um, I think we all kind of have uh, that friend or that family member that we know that will buy something, a camera, a computer, a car, and they'll just never enjoy it because they're just so overtaken with the fact that it might break or something might happen to it. It might get a scratch on it. And, you know, I've always taken really good care of my stuff. That's just how I am. But I never baby it to a point of not enjoying it. And I know a lot of people like that. And I know people that are opposite of that. So uh, the reason why I'm making this video is because it, it really is a a big thing, you know, that I see a lot where so many people will buy, they have this like dollar amount in their head. And the second that they spend over a certain amount on a camera or a computer or whatever, it's like, you know, oh gosh, if this thing breaks, you know, it's the end of the world and, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get another one ever or, you know, what happens to it. So I, I just need to buy it and keep it, you know, in, sh in showroom condition and just nestle it forever. But here's the thing. Let's talk about just the photographers uh, here since, since that's what I do. For cameras, these things are tools. The, the only purpose of a camera is to take what's up here, all of our creative vision and everything, and to just spit it out to the rest of the world. That's the only thing a camera is used for, right? It takes our vision and this allows, it, this allows us to communicate that vision with, with the rest of the world. And, and with ourselves, it allows us to see our vision on a print or on the screen or whatever. And they're tools and tools are meant to be used. So. Uh, so many professional photographers that I've shot with, which I've, I've had the uh, great opportunity to shoot with, a, with quite a few of outdoor nature landscape photographers that I know, the last thing on their mind in the field is what if my gear gets dropped in the water or the mud or what if it starts raining? All they're paying attention to is two things. Number one, composition. Number two, light. And that's it. When they're out in the field, they're just looking at what composition might arise and what the light is doing. And that's all that's on their mind. That's all they're, that's all they're focused on. That's what, that's all you should be focused on. Obviously, I'm not saying don't pay any attention, you know, you know, of course, take care of your gear. Don't wear your gear on your side. You know, when you're, when you're hiking, if you're going to knock it into trees or rocks or whatever, I'm just saying don't baby them to a point of not enjoying them because photography is an enjoyable thing and it should be uh, it should be that these are just tools that, that deserve to be used. There's a lot of people out there that'll tell you a lot of different things to kind of scare you. Like for example, taking the lens cap off and if you don't have your microfiber cloth, maybe you left it at home. If you do this, oh my gosh, I just ripped like five coatings off of my lens. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I've been doing this for 12 or 13 years and if there's acid in my breath that will melt through my lens, I probably need to see a doctor. So again, whether that's true or not, I don't know. The point is, don't worry about that kind of stuff so much. These are tools, use them. Use them in the field and have fun with them because you'll have more fun that way. Um, here's what's funny. I've shot with, with both kinds of photographers. I've shot with the kinds of photographers that worry so much about their gear that it makes them sick. And I've shot with the opposite kind of people that just don't care what happens. And what's funny is the people that worry about their gear so much and that always try to like overly protect their gear, those are the people that have their gear stolen or dropped in the mud or get wet or ruined because they attract it. Now this is kind of going off on a little philosophical tangent, but if you dwell on the negative and dwell on all the things that you don't want to happen, you'll start to attract those things into your life and they will start happening. So when I'm, on, when I'm out hiking or on the trail, I'm just dwelling on the great positive vibes that might unveil themselves in front of me. Light, sunrise, sunset, uh, nature, composition, all these different things that can happen. I'm just worried about the shot, the end result. And if, if something happens to my gear along the way, you know, it'll suck, but so be it. I'll get it taken care of like I always have. I'll send it into Nikon, it'll be a few hundred dollars to repair it, they'll send it back, and it'll be good as new and I'll go shoot it again. 
that's the thing. It's not the end of the world, okay? There's, there's very few things you can do to a camera within reason that will just shatter in, into a million pieces and you'll never be able to use it again, okay? You can, nine times out of 10, every time I've ever had a camera issue, I've been able to send it into Nikon or Canon or Fujifilm or Sony, whoever you have, and they'll repair it and they'll ship it back. And sometimes if you're part of their special programs, they'll even ship you like a loaner camera. So there's always options out there. Of course, you can get gear insurance, which is a smart thing to think about. There's a lot of options to just be kind of that like safety net for you. But while you're out shooting, don't think about babying your gear and what happens to it. It's their, their tools and they're meant to be used. I'll tell you a quick story about kind of a, a risk and reward situation that happened to me. So if you go back a couple months on my YouTube channel, there's a, a video I made called, uh, I think I just named it, my D810 got wet. And I was basically under a big pier uh, right at sunset. And I was, I just noticed this awesome sunset starts to, to just kind of form in the sky. The colors, kind of the, this, the sheen on the water was nice. And I was just on a family vacation. I wasn't even there to like do work, but I did have my D810 with me. So I got in the water with my tripod and my D810. I was in probably a almost waist deep water. So it was like, a, I don't know, maybe somewhere halfway between my knees and my waist. And I'm, and I'm about six feet tall. So it was, you know, semi deep to be in there with your camera. And there were these waves, there were pretty good waves coming in. And so I, I, I took a few shots. I didn't like it. I adjusted my composition. I finally got a good shot that I liked. And the second that I knew I got that shot, a wave comes crashing in over my tripod. Soaks me, it soaks my camera. In fact, it's, it, this exact camera and this exact lens, it soaked them with salt water. And of course, when that happens, salt water is like the number one enemy of electronics, right? If you leave it on there, it'll corrode your stuff. So. I trust my weather ceiling, number one, but number two, I'm also cautious, but I'm not, I'm not too cautious. I don't baby my stuff. So when I got home from vacation, I took it into a Nikon certified repair shop that's not far from my house. And I just said, hey, can you guys just check this out? Make sure it's okay. And uh, they all they noticed was that there was some moisture, just a little bit of moisture that got up under this LCD. Uh, they kind of dried in there, so they just disassembled it. They cleaned it. They looked at the rest of the inside of the body because they disassembled this, and they said everything's great. It, it's there's nothing in there, and I, I think it overall it cost me 150 to 200 bucks, something like that. Not bad, and. Uh, you know, I got the camera back, I don't know, about a week later, brand new camera, basically. They, they cleaned it out, they, uh, they verified that everything's working good, and I got the shot. So here's the cool thing. Uh, if you wanna know what that photo is, go back a couple videos uh, about my art mill print that I ordered, and I ordered a 24 by 36 of this photo. It's one of my favorite photos I've ever taken, and I'm actually currently in conversation with a big retail shopping center across, from the, across the street from the pier that I photographed, and they're actually talking to me about licensing the image. So. You know, it was risky to do that. There was some risk there, but the reward is already starting to pay off. So if you never take the risk, you'll never know what the reward could have been. And you're not always gonna get the reward, but the fun is trying it. You have to, you have to take the risk and you have to have fun and a lot of the time it will pay off. So don't baby your gear. These are tools, have fun using them, and they're very rigid cameras. So can we, they're a lot, I mean, the modern day cameras, even the older cameras are built so well. Uh, I remember I, I have done horrible things to my old Nikon D3, D3S, D4. They're, I mean, they, they can just, they can all take a beating. So don't, don't be so, you know, freak out and freaky about this stuff. I'll tell you one more little story. I went uh, shooting with uh, an older guy that's been doing photography since the film. I mean, he, I think he's been doing photography for like 40 years or something. And uh, he's a family friend. And I, I went shooting with him on a little landscape photography day. And neither one of us had our phone at the time. We didn't have any pen and paper. We didn't have anything to take notes. And he was wanting to take notes about something on the trail. And he didn't have anything to do, to do that. So I saw him looking around and he was taking a, uh, he found a small rock, okay? And I was like, what in the world is he about to do? Had a small rock and he took his camera. I think he had a Canon 1DS something, one, old 1DS Mark II, Mark III. And he took the rock and he started uh, carving the notes that he wanted to take into the top of his camera. He was carving with a rock on the top of his camera. And of course I was even like, what in the world are you doing? And he goes, I, I have to take these notes because you know, I'm, I'm commissioned by this state park to, to you know, scout this area or whatever. He said, I have to know where this is so I can get back to it. I don't remember what he was doing, but he carved it into the top of his camera. And you know, <laughs> taking care of his camera was the last thing on his mind. He was, he was in photographer getting the job done mode. You know, he, he had to, to go back to this part of the trail. He had to take notes about something. He didn't have anything. He had his camera. It's a tool. 
it helped him get the job done. He carved in it, and now his camera is a notepad. But he doesn't care. It, that doesn't make it any less of a camera. It doesn't. It doesn't. You know, stop it from taking photos. Sure, it'll it'll take some money off of the resale value. But when you when you're a photographer, you know, a real photographer working in the industry, you don't worry about resale value. You worry about the camera and is it going to work good for you and is it going to get the job done for you. And if it is, it's just a tool, and you're going to go through different tools, and we just use them to get the job done. So uh, I hope this helped. I just wanted to clear this up. I'm not the kind of person that just sits here and, and rock a -bye babies my gear all day. I use it. So turn my video off, stop watching my YouTube channel, shut it off, go outside, shoot, and use your gear. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my photography videos and free tutorials, please consider subscribing by clicking on my face. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to improve your photography, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.